Special thanks to Patreon supporter Ratcatcher2 for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scare 204 here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare Vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the M1135 NBCRV. The M1135, known as the Nuclear Biological Chemical Reconnaissance Vehicle, or abbreviated to MBCRV, provides nuclear biological and chemical detection and surveillance for battlefield and hazard visualization. The MB CRV provides situational awareness to increase the combat power of the Striker Brigade combat team. The core of the MBC RV is its onboard integrated MBC sensor suite and integrated meteorological system. An MBC positive overpressure system a minimizes cross contamination of samples and detection instruments, provides crew protection, and allows extended operations at MOP 0. It replaces the M93 Fox vehicle. The NBC RV detects and collects chemical and biological contamination in its local environment on the move through point detection and joint biological point detection systems, and at a distance through the use of standoff detector. It automatically integrates contamination information from detectors with input from onboard navigation and meteorological systems and automatically transmit digital NBC warning messages through the mission command system. So yeah, pretty uh, interesting vehicle here. Um, the uh, vehicle here is basically a very important one of our striker convoy. And I mean, we continue to keep building these strikers and really we're building up like probably every variable we could possibly imagine here, but is a very important part of the modern day battlefield where chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons are definitely an everyday threat for modern battlefields. This vehicle here is obviously designed to detect that and be able to save lives. Um, this vehicle here can early warn um, other vehicles of the presence of chemical, biological, or uh, nuclear uh, presence and in return protect those troops from exposure. So, a very important vehicle in a striker brigade, and a uh, pretty interesting one. I actually did not know really about this um, this vehicle in particular, and it's kind of cool to uh, build this and add this to our ever-growing family of strikers. I mean, I swear, every month we're having a couple strikers come out. Uh, one day we're going to run out of the striker variants, but it seems like no time soon as we continue to find these new variants to uh, do. But uh, I'm loving it, and hopefully you guys are really able to build some cool convoys so far with this, with our strikers that we've released so far. Um, but anyways, before we go and jump in and take a look at this build, I want to go and give a big thanks to a new patron, Ratcatcher2, for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, more you guys are, I do feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and is really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check it out. Again, links are always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in here to take a look at the um, M1135. So, going ahead and start off with, it's basically like our standard striker, um, seem kind of whole uh, shape and all that stuff for the most part. Uh, mainly the differences are going to be around the side here, but we have these kind of panels, it's kind of a little bit more boxed off on the end here. I imagine this is probably for some sort of detection equipment, uh, computer systems, who knows, um, but they just have a little bit more space and it's kind of squared off a little bit in this area. Lots of extra uh, cargo uh, capacity on the side of the vehicle, which makes sense, probably being able to carry hazmat uh, response materials or uh, nuclear biological and chemical um, mop suits or something of that sort. Uh, but yeah, lots of uh, different uh, little um, gear strapped on the side of the vehicle here. This does actually have a different back to it. It's kind of this um, weird um, kind of triangle uh, shape that kind of comes off the back here. Um, so that's really what is a telltale sign from the striker. It really makes it stand out from the air variances this back and the way that it is constructed. Up on top here, we have obviously our automated um, or controllable machine gun. Could be both. Um, mounts up on top there, our smoke grenade dispensers. And then we have our um, little uh, kind of, I guess you could call this a viewport or something of that sort. Spare tire up on top here. And then we have all of our meteorological and um, yeah, biological, chemical, and nuclear. Uh, detection equipment all located up in here and our radio antennas of course so pretty fun build should be a nice one to add to your convoys and definitely spice it up with um, a uh, vehicle with a very important role anyways let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer all right guys so going ahead and moving into our first layer here we go ahead and start with layer one for layer one to go ahead and get started with here we're going to place down two polished black stone stairs upside down back to back like so and we're going to then place down a second set of black black stone upside down stairs back to back as well directly behind those like so we don't want to place down a stone brick top slab coming off these two 
uh, polished black stone stairs, and then an iron trap door come off those. Fall by a narrow stone top slab to the sides here. A polished black stone upside stair, a second stair coming off the back here, and another upside stair here, and a stair coming off the back of that. So we basically create our front two axles like that for the vehicle. We're gonna go then skip a space of two, place down another set of two of polished black stone upside stairs, going back, and another set of two of polished black stone stairs directly after that. Again, stone brick top slabs both sides there, iron trap doors, stone brick top slabs, and again, polished black stone up down stairs, like that along the sides there. And with that all done, that's really going to be it for layer one, pretty simple, straightforward layer. Here's what it looks like from the top down view, and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number two. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to get started with here, we're going to place down two polished black stone stairs back to back on top of each one of these uh, blocks like this. So this is going to be like this here for each of our wheels. And we're going to have a total of eight of these all the way around the vehicle, like so. After that's done, go ahead and move into our axles. We're going to place down iron trap doors on top of the, or sorry, anvils on top of the iron trap doors, and then a stone brick wall to the sides there. So just like that. After that's done, taking our green terracotta, we're going to place down a row of three across the front here, followed by a second row of three across, across this section with a zombie head on both sides of that row of three. And then a row of three of dark oak with top subs across, followed by an item frame come off those two slabs at the sides and then trip our hooks in those item frames rotated so that are facing downwards like so. After that, going ahead and moving into this section here, we're going to go ahead and take our green terracotta, place down another row of three right here, followed by a second row of three and then a third row, going across like so. We're going to then place down a dark oak with top slab on the sides here of this green terracotta block to both sides. And we then want to go ahead and take our green terracotta, place down a row of three across here, a row of three across this section here, followed by a second row of three, and then also a third row of three. We're gonna go ahead and take our dark oakwood stairs, we're place down a dark oakwood upside down stair to both sides, and a dark oakwood upside down corner stair coming off those two stairs. Coming off the sides of these stairs, we're gonna place down item frames to both sides, followed by trip bar hooks, and those item frames rotate so that they're facing downwards like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a zombie head on these two green terracotta blocks and an end rod right between them, like so. And we're gonna go ahead and also grab <coughs> Excuse me, grab ourselves some grindstones, and we're going to go over this section here. We're going to place down a grindstone coming off this block like so. And just a little side note is if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you will not be able to place down the item frame and the grindstone in the same block space. If that's the case, just go ahead and prioritize the grindstone as that's kind of the priority there. The item frame there is just kind of an extra little bit of detail. So um, on Java, we can do this, but on Bedrock or uh, Pocket Edition, you'll go ahead and have to find an alternative for putting that grindstone there. Anyways, after we have that all done, uh, the last thing for us to do is to go ahead and make those banners here for this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials. And uh, here's real quick is a top-down view of this layer complete. And I'm going to go ahead and grab those materials to make those banners. I'll see you guys here shortly and show you guys how to make them. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into making the um, banners here for these wheels. We're going to need a loom, two black banners, two green dye, four black dye. We're going to start off by going ahead and going into our loom. We're going to place down our two black banner, or, or, or black banners and our green dye. For our first black banner, we're going to go and do the line vertically on the left side of green dye and then line vertically on the right side like so. We're going to go ahead and create these two banners here and then each of these banners is going to be placed back into a loom along with our black dye. We're going to do the line horizontally across the bottom with black and the line horizontally across the top there with black as well. And we're just going to do the same thing here for both banners and we'll get both of our uh, wheels that look just like this. Or both our banners I should say. And these banners here are just very simply going to go ahead and go on the side of these polished black stone stairs with the green portion facing toward each other. And this is just going to be done for all eight wheels, and it will create a nice wheel looking effect here for the vehicle. And with that all done right there, that right there is going to complete what we have there for layer two. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number three. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to be given, we're going to place down three green terracotta blocks on top of these dark oakwood top slabs, followed by a green stained glass pane, or sorry, a mossy cobbles the wall to both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of three that goes back from this row here. With again, a mossy cobblestone wall on both sides. And then going toward the front here, we're going to place down a row of three that sticks out like so. A green stained glass pane to both sides. And then a item frame here. White bed in the item frame, rotate on its side. Two dark oak wood signs over. And if you're on Java, we can place down a dark oak wood sign on the side of this block here. If you're on Bedrock or Park Edition, you're not able to place down an item frame and a sign in the same block space. So if that's the case, just go ahead and prior towards push it, putting the item frame and disregard the sign. If you're on Java, it's a nice extra bit of detail there that we can put, so uh, we're going to go ahead and put that there as well. At this point here, we then want to go ahead and go to each one of our stone brick walls, and we're going to just place down one more that goes up, 
like this across our axles there, and we're going to then place down a green terracotta block between those walls. This front section here, we're going to place down a row three across this section, followed by a second row three, a third row right here, and then a row of five of green terracotta across this section. A, another row of three here, a row of three, a second row of three, and then a third row of three like that going back. Now once we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and basically do our kind of, I guess, fenders, you can say. We're going to place down a dark oak up down stair here, and then one, two, three, dark oak with top subs back, and our upside down stair coming off this green terracotta block. Over here, basically the same thing, upside down stair, one, two, three, dark oak with top slabs, and an air upside down stair. We then want to go ahead and place down an upside down stair here as well, and then one, two, and three, dark oak with top slabs back, and same thing over here, one, two, three, and also don't forget our upside down stair there. So upside down stair, three dark oak with top slabs back. At this point here, over here on the right side, and the right side only, we're going to go to this green terracotta block, we're going to place down dark oak with top slab to the side, and one back. So you're going to have that little stick out there on the right side and the right side only. After this, we're going to go and take our green terracotta. We're going to place down a row of, or a green terracotta block to both sides here. Coming off that block, we're going to place down an item frame. And then in that item frame, we're going to place down a trip bar hook rotated so that it is facing downwards like so. After that, we're going to then place down a dark oakwood stair on top of those two top slabs, followed by a dark oakwood sign on the sides here of these stairs, followed by an item frame coming off the two stairs there, and we're going to go then place down an apple in those item frames, like so. Again, if you're on Java, we can go and then take a dark oak fence gate and place it down coming off these stairs and open them up toward the stairs, like so. And then for the middle space here, uh, we're going to place down a spruce wood stair to the right side, followed by a black concrete block here in the center. And then we just want to go and place down a ladder coming off that black concrete block, and then a dark oak wood up down stair to the side here, like so. After we have that all done, we're going to go then place down a zombie head coming off this stair like this toward the back. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer 3. Taking a look at it from the top down view, this is what we should have with this layer complete. And uh, with that though, that is going to wrap up layer 3. Let's move on to layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into layer 4. For layer 4 to begin with, we're going to place down an anvil on top of this green terracotta block here, followed by a zombie head that comes off of it toward the front. We then want to go ahead and go to both sides of it, and we're going to place down a dark oak with slab, like so, followed by a dark oak fence gate on top of these walls and have those opened up toward the front as well as an item frame coming off those two fence gates with a snowball in those item frames like so. We're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves a dark oak button and we're just going to place down a dark oak button on those two green terracotta blocks. At this point here we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a debug stick so using the give command um, we can go ahead and basically give ourselves a debug stick here and this is a java only feature but what we're going to be able to do here is we're going to build a block out to the sides here from those uh, fence gates, and we can go ahead and then grab ourselves a lever, place it down the sides of these blocks, and then using the debug stick here, we can actually go ahead and rotate the facing. So we're going to go and select the facing, and we're going to rotate this to the west, or basically for me the west, for you it might be different. Uh, we're going to rotate this so it connects up to those fence gates, like that to both sides, and just so we don't have to worry about them later, we're just going to go and place down a zombie hit here at a slight angle on top of those levers. If you're on uh, Pocket Edition or Bedrock, you'll have to find an alternative for this um, design there, but this again right here pretty much is really only a bedrock or a java feature there so you have to kind of find uh, something that will work for you guys depending on your version anyways at this point we're going to then place down a row of three of dark oakwood stairs across followed by a dark oakwood corner stair to both sides like so and then we want to place down a row of three of green terracotta blocks across this space followed by a dark oakwood corner stair like that to both sides coming off that corner stair we're going to go and grab ourselves some item frames again and also some tripwire hooks. We're going to place down an item frame and a tripwire hook in the item frame. Rotate so it's facing upwards. Same thing over here. Item frame and tripwire hook like so. Then taking our green terracotta blocks, we're going to place down a row of five across. Followed by a second row of five. Then a third row. A fourth row. A fifth row. A sixth row. And we're going to stop at six rows of five going across here. Over here on the right side of the vehicle, we're going to place down two green terracotta blocks on top of those two dark oak top slabs, two trip bar hooks coming off those, and then we just want to place down a row of one, two, and three mossy cobblestone walls going forward. Over here on the left side of the vehicle, it's a little bit different. Uh, we actually want to go ahead and swap out these two green terracotta blocks. So right here, these are going to be two green shulker boxes, like so. We are going to place down an item frame on the side of this green terracotta block, and in that item frame, we're going to place down a iron bar, like so. And then grabbing dark oak with buttons again, we're going to place down two dark oak with buttons along those two green terracotta blocks, as well as a dark oak with fence gate on this green terracotta block, 
and also from the previous layer, something I forgot to do with place down a dark oak fence gate. Turn off this green terracotta block and open it up to it as well. So it should look like that there on the left side. And then after we have that done, uh, we're gonna go then uh, take our green terracotta. We're gonna place down four rows of the fairy. So one, two, three, and four. And on these rows to the sides, we're gonna place down one, two, three, four green choker boxes and one, two, three, and four. Now over here on the left side of the vehicle, we're gonna place down a zombie head. Come off this first one. We're gonna go then grab ourselves a end stone. Uh, brick wall. We're going to place down an end stone brick wall and then two stripped birch wood logs like that on the side there. Over here on the right side, a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and place down a tripwire hook coming off this um, shulker box and then a dark oak button here right next to it. After that, we want to place down a row of three of green terracotta across a mossy cobblestone wall to both sides and then we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak sign on the sides here of these walls. So, like so. And we're going to go then place down a green shulker box on top of these fence gates like that. And dark oak wood signs wrapped around the fence gates, or around the shulker boxes like so. After that, uh, in the middle here, we're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block on top of this one, followed by a ladder on the side of it like so. We then want to place down a granite wall right here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a green stained glass pane in this space, followed by a mossy cobblestone wall that comes off the green stained glass pane like that toward the rear there. And with that all done, that right there is going to basically conclude this layer here, just making sure I'm not forgetting anything and everything does appear to be good. So just make sure you have both sides taken into consideration, the differences on each one. Take a look at from above, this is what it should look like for the top down view with this layer. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer number four, and with that let's move on to layer number five. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, and place down a dark oak slab on top of this green terracotta block. Iron frame on the side, black bin in the iron frame rotated on the side, and a dark oak sign like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a zombie head at a slight angle, like that to both sides, as well as a narrow dark oak wood slab back with a zombie head like this to both sides of that slab like so. At this point here, we want to go and then take our anvils. We're going to place down a row of two of anvils located in this section here, followed by a dark oak wood slab coming off the, or sorry, stair coming off the side there of the anvils like that. We then want to go ahead and place down a lectern located in this section here, and then a dark oak wood stair coming off the lectern toward the front. And we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign on the front there of that stair. Take our polished black stone, we're going to place down a polished black stone full block right here, followed by a polished black stone stair. And then come off that polished black stone stair, we are going to place down a dark oak wood trap door and close it like that up against the front of the stair. With that done to the sides here, we're going to then place down two polished black stone walls, and that right there will pretty much create our front. Uh, we can also go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak wood fence post. We're going to place down a dark oak wood fence post on top of this corner stair. Uh, we then want to build two blocks up, so one, two, we're going to delete this middle block, place that end rod on the bottom of this block, and then delete that block, like so, to go ahead and make that little front pole there. With that done, uh, going ahead and taking our stairs here, we're going to go ahead and take our uh, dark oak wood stairs, and we're going to be going ahead and placing down a row that goes across here. So it's going to be a row of one, two, three, and then it's going to be a normal stair over here on the right side, and then a corner stair over here on the left side. So a little bit different there on both sides. After we have that done, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three green terracotta blocks down the center there. Um, after that, we're going to then place down a green sugar box on the left side. And then one, two green terracotta blocks. And then lastly, another row of three of green terracotta across. On both sides here, we're going to place down a row of three of mossy cobblestone walls going back. And then coming off those mossy cobblestone walls on the left side, we're going to place down one, two, three green stained glass panes. And over here on the right side, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four like that along the side there. After that, taking our green terracotta, we're going to place down a row of three across, followed by a second row, a third row, and then a fourth row, and a fifth row, going across this section like so. To the sides here, we're going to place down one, two, three, four green choker boxes, and same thing over here, one, two, three, four. We're going to then take our dark oak buttons and place down a row of four of dark oak buttons on the side here of those green choker boxes. We then want to place down a mossy cobblestone wall in these corner spaces, like this to both sides. We're going to place down an item frame over here on the left side, coming off this mossy cobblestone wall with a tripwire hook in the item frame, rotated so it's facing downwards. And then over here on the left side, we're going to do the same technique we did up in the front there for our side mirrors, and that's going to be using a debug stick here and a lever. So we'll go ahead and grab myself the debug stick, and we'll just go ahead and rotate it so it's coming off the wall like so. 
And then after we have that done, uh, that right there will be the difference there on both sides. We're going to go then place down a zombie head on top of each one of these green shulker boxes on the back there. As well as a zombie head on the center. Green terracotta block. A dark oak fence gate right here. Mossy cobblestone wall going up from it. And then a dark oak button going off the green terracotta block like so. With uh, that all complete there, that right there is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number 5 for the build. And um, yeah, with that we'll be going ahead and moving into our final layers, which will basically be putting everything on the top of the vehicle and going ahead and finishing it off. So with that, let's move into our final layers. Alright guys, so moving into our final layers here, we have layers 6 through 10. For these layers, to go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down a 2x2 uh, two two square of polished blackstone, so 1 2 across those anvils here, and then our 2 located in this spot right here. We're going to then place down a green terracotta block here, dark, a mossy cobblestone wall on top of it, and then a dark oak trap door on top of this wall, followed by an item frame that comes off of it toward the front, a black bed in the item frame rotates so it's facing downwards, and again if you're on Java, we can place down a dark oak sign on the side of that um, wall as well like that. With that out of the way, uh, we can go ahead and then go to the sides here. We're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall on top of this one, followed by a dark oak sign there on the side. We then want to place down a dark oak slab on this block and right here as well. And in the middle here, between the two, we're going to place down a spruce wood slab as well as dark oak wood slabs coming off the remaining two sides there of that spruce wood slab. We're going to go ahead and take some zombie heads. We're going to place down zombie heads in the corners here. So at 45 degree angles, like that. And we then want to go ahead and place down a dark oak button on top of the shulker box, like so. As well as a redstone repeater on top of this green terracotta block like that with the notches spread apart like so. We're going to go then grab ourselves some daylight detectors. We're going to place down one and two back from this slab there and an air two back right alongside it. Followed by two dark liquid signs coming off those and uh, coming off those daylight detectors like so. We then want to place down a row of four of item frames like so and then iron bars in those item frames just like that. We then want to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall which will be right here. And then to the sides of it, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak fence post. Like right here. And then a zombie head right here as well. We're going to go then uh, take our end rods. We're going to place down a row of one end rod like this going back. As well as a polished black stone wall on top of this fence post here. And a end rod on top of this mossy cobblestone wall. We're going to go ahead and place down an end rod coming off this um, polished black stone wall, followed by two end rods up right here, and then a dark oak fence gate, one, two, and we're going to open these up like that toward the front there. On top of these right here, we're going to place down wither skeleton skulls on top of the wall there, and also the end rod, like so. We then want to go ahead and grab some levers and our debug stick, as well as some placeholder blocks. We're going to go ahead and build to the side here, a little block right here, and a block right there. We're going to place down our levers here on the sides. This one up here, we're going to go ahead and rotate so that it is facing up against our wall like this. And we're going to go ahead and have it activated so it's facing downwards. And this right here, we're going to go ahead and change it so it's faced the floor. And we're going to go ahead and rotate this as well to face backwards like so. After we have that all done, we want to go ahead and then grab our end rods. We're going to place down the end rod on top of this block right here. And we're going to then place down a dark oak fence post on top of it like that. We then want to place down a fence post on top of this block here, and also right here. And then going up from those, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four end rods. And then right here, one, two, three, and four. Uh, actually, iron bars. I think it said end rods, so it should be iron bars. We're going to go and then place down a spruce wood trap door in this section here, followed by an iron frame to both sides and a green terracotta block in those iron frames. As well as a dark oak fence post on top of this mossy cobblestone wall. We're going to then go up from it and forward with two chains. We then want to go ahead and go up and forward with it, forward with uh, three chains. From this uh, third chain here, we're going to go ahead and place down a. Uh, or actually, my bad. This is actually supposed to be moved over one, so it's actually this fence post here should be on top of that lever. And then we're going to place down our chains like this, so it should stick out to the side here. Like so. And then at this uh, last one right here, we're going to take our iron bars. We're going to place down a row of one and two. Up like so. And then a chain coming off this top iron bar like that for this radio antenna. 
And then the last thing for us to do up here is to go ahead and basically build our machine gun. So for our machine gun here, we're gonna place down a anvil on top of this wall right here. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and place down polished blackstone upside down stair, coming off of it going forward. Coming off the anvil toward the air direction, we're gonna place down a dark oak fence gate, open it up toward the anvil. And then coming off the uh, polished blackstone stair, we're gonna place down two chains going forward. We then want to grab an item frame, place this on the side of the stair here. And then grabbing our black beds again, we're going to place down a black bed on the side here. In the item frame, rotate it sideways, and again if we're on Java, a dark oak would sign there on the side of the stair. On top of the stair, we're going to place down a redstone repeater, spread the notches apart like so. Then a green shulker box to the side of this stair. And on top of that green shulker box, we're going to go ahead and place down a powered rail, like so, for the um, ammo belt. After this, we're going to grab some dark oak fence gates and wither skeleton skulls. We're going to place down a dark oak fence gate underneath that polished black stone stair. As well as a fence gate coming off both sides of it, opened up toward that fence gate in the middle. And then coming off those fence gates there, we're going to place down wither skeleton skulls like that for the smoke grenade dispensers. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up my tutorial here for the M1135 um, nuclear biological chemical uh, reconnaissance vehicle. Hope you guys do enjoy this vehicle and are able to put to good use. If you don't use this build, I do ask you guys giving proper credit for it. This will be from the side of the build. Tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear on your media sites. As well as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter uh, Ratcatcher2 for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. But with that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett2 before, and I'll see you guys next time.